What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot, and in today's video, I've got a rather niche video for you, but it can be incredibly useful if you came looking for this answer. Basically, if you download a program off of the internet, install it and start using it, for whatever reason, you may not want it having access to the internet. As you probably know, opening up a program's folder, you'll probably see a bunch of different EXEs and a bunch of different EXEs inside of different folders. Now, of course, we all know of the Windows Firewall, which we can get to by pressing Start, typing in Firewall, and then heading across to Windows Defender Firewall or Advanced Security. When we head across here, we'll be able to go into Outbound and Inbound rules and then block programs one by one or allow them one by one by going to Program and selecting where they are. However, when we do this, we're only able to select one EXE at a time and not just all of them which is rather unfortunate as we can't target folders with a bunch of EXEs and programs inside of them. This video today is going to show you how you can block or allow for that case every program EXE inside of a specific folder and do it recursively so you won't have to worry about subfolders with EXEs and things hidden inside of them. These are of course just different programs off of the internet, ARIA 2C and FFmpeg. These aren't at all viruses or anything like that. But of course, we all have our own reasons for looking for something like this. Regardless, how do we do it? Well, we can do this really simply on Windows with the use of a simple batch file. Simply navigate to a folder, right click and then click new followed by text document. You should see new text document dot text. If you don't see dot txt afterwards, head across to the view tab and make sure file name extensions is checked. Then we'll be renaming the file to something like script.bat. The first part isn't important, but only the .bat at the end is very important, turning it into an executable batch file. Then right click and click edit. If you don't have that option, simply open the file with a text editor such as notepad. Then have a look in the description down below for a simple command. That simple command is this over here. What exactly does it do? Well, these first two lines only enable extensions and tell it to navigate to this folder over here and will then tell it to run whatever commands next inside of this folder over here where the .batch file is and where we run it from. With that out of the way, over here we have for slash r meaning for each file, recursively meaning subfolders included, that r of .exe file type do the following, net sh ATV firewall, firewall, add rule, name equals block, dir equals out, program equals, followed by the path of the actual file, and action equals blocked. This line over here is the command line option to add rules to the Windows firewall, which is this over here. Let's quickly break this command apart. This command over here adds a rule to the Windows firewall. NetSH, advanced firewall, firewall, add rule, simply tells us to create a new rule. DIR is direction out. So we'll head across to the outbound tab, create a new rule. And that's basically what the command has done. Then the program is the exe file inside of our folder. So program file and does this. Then the action is listed over here, block. So block the connection. Then this last section over here is the last part of the command. Name equals blocked percentage F. So it'll show up as blocked followed by the path of the file itself. That's basically what this command over here does. We can change the direction from just outbound to just inbound. And action block, we can change that to say allow. So let's say that we want to block programs inbound and outbound. How do we do that? Well, we can add multiple commands inside of these brackets over here. So we can duplicate it and add an in direction as well as an out direction. This way, a program is blocked from getting data in and sending data out. And of course, we can change it to allow data in and out. Now that we've told the script to block EXEs inside of a folder in both the in and out direction, let's go ahead and test it out. In that case, I'll simply navigate out of the firewall. Then I'll locate the batch script, right click, and then click run as admin. There we go. Some commands were ran and the file paused at the very end. By default, it doesn't pause at the very end. This window just disappears, but I added a line to the script over here, pause, which gets it to stay on my screen, waiting for a key input. Either way, looking at this, we can see that it simply ran the command and blocked each exe, inbound and outbound, OK, OK. So let's go ahead and have a look at the advanced firewall window over here. I'll go to action, followed by refresh, and we'll head down to B. So I'll sort by name, and we can see a bunch of blocked entries over here. Making it a bit bigger, we can see C uses Technobo Desktop, 
test, which is this folder over here. So you use the Technopo desktop test. And then we've got area 2 c FFmpeg times three and an FFmpeg folder inside of this folder over here. Great, so it worked as expected. Having a look in the inbound section, we have the exact same thing where all of these programs are blocked on the inbound route. Great, so it worked exactly as expected. We can of course select them all and hit the delete button to get rid of those rules. I'll of course be doing them as I've just got these here temporarily. There we go, super simple. You should be able to do something with this and hopefully this video answered your question if you had one. Thank you for watching. My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.